health nutrition, which I concluded in 2007. That was how the journey started. Today, I am what I am, a professor of public health nutrition by the grace of God and the unflinching support of my heart throb. This event for me accentuated the truth that indeed the footsteps of the righteous are ordered by God and he grants their heart's desires. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I am standing in this prestigious auditorium today to give an account of my stewardship from the humble beginning as an assistant lecturer employed on August 1, 2002, and climb the rungs of the ladder to become a professor on October 1, 2016, 14 years after I was employed. The nutrition unit of the department has metamorphosed into a full-fledged department of human nutrition and dietetics, now in the faculty of basic medical sciences, College of Health Sciences. This is the second inaugural lecture delivered by the staff of the Department of FNC and the first on nutrition. Also, it is the first in the newly established Department of Human Nutrition and Dietetics. The trajectory navigated has been a long one spanning two decades. I am here to subtly capture and present what I have done so far with the title, Smart Teens Understand the Magic Bullet to Break Malnutrition Cycle, Journey to the World of Adolescent Nutrition. As a young academia, it was sung into our hearing by senior colleagues at the annual departmental review meetings where recommendations for promotions are made that we should be focused on our research area right from beginning, I decided to carve a niche for myself in adolescent nutrition, having done my PhD research in that domain. I took interest and decided to up a notch in, a, in the nutrition of the vulnerable groups, including children, adolescent girls, and women of reproductive age. Who is an adolescent? According to World Health Organization, adolescence, the transitional phase of growth and development between childhood and adulthood, is defined as anyone within the age range of 10 and 19 years. It is an important time for laying the foundation of good health and the second fasted period of growth after infancy. During this phase, adolescents establish patterns of behavior, for instance, related to diet, physical activity, substance abuse or use, and sexual activity. They can protect their health and the health of others around them, or put their health at risk now and in the future. It is also a time about child's development, and it even affects everything about education and economic development. If I had one magic power to solve the world's challenges, 
Nutrition will be that power. Nutrition belongs to the top of the list, and investment in nutrition can help make every other investment in health and development pay off, unquote. Today, the world is talking about sustainable development goals. There are 17 of them, out of which 12 have indicators relevant to nutrition. Nutrition must be brought to the front burner from a nation to prosper, putting the right peg in the right hole to champion the cause. Why adolescent girls? In Nigeria, on the nutrition in female adolescents, ranges between 23 and 58% and is attributed to socioeconomic and dietary factors. Dietary behavior and nutritional status of female adolescents are becoming a major concern because they determine health outcomes. Aside from dietary behavior, maternal conditions are the top causes of mortality among girls aged 15. Pregnant undernourished female adolescents may likely give birth to undernourished babies with low birth weight, who die at birth or before age two years, thereby contributing to the increase in maternal, infant, and under five mortality rate or stunted growth at adulthood. Likewise, an overweight female gives birth to an overweight child and the intergenerational vicious cycle of malnutrition continues. A focused intervention program is vital to improving female adolescent dietary and sexual behavior. The transformative shift for sustainable development involves ensuring that female adolescents have access to quality nutrition in preparation for productive and reproductive life. Only healthy individuals impact the economy positively and do not clog up hospital services. Adolescent girls are now becoming women of reproductive age. It's a case of a baby carrying baby. We do not have to wait until malnourished children are born by malnourished mothers before we start addressing them as in the case of maternal and child nutrition. Adolescent has been identified as a window of opportunity to solve malnutrition problems. Despite calls for action, it has remained neglected. I decided to delve into adolescent nutrition to promote a healthy start to life for the next generation by addressing health and nutritional risk in adolescent girls. Having identified the research lacuna, my research focuses on promoting healthy diet in adolescent, one of the evidence-informed interventions and policies for adolescent nutrition proposed by WHO. These were achieved by assessing behavioral profiles, dietary patterns, and main influencers of adolescents in the context of their social and psychosocial development. For my current research activities, the adolescents were reached through the school platform. Specifically, in-school adolescent girls were targeted to become change agents to out-of-school adolescent girls in society. Nutrition education, promotion and communication were adopted to inform, educate, and train adolescent girls on the why, how, and when adequate nutrition is needed to live a healthy and productive adult life. For my research activities, two conceptual frameworks were adapted. They are, number one, WHO conceptual framework of nutritional problems in adolescents, and number two, poor nutrition throughout the life cycle. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, my research activities contributed to nutrition and health data on the age group in southwestern Nigeria. I carried out research studies in three areas. Number one, in school adolescent girls as the main focus. Number two, mothers and households, because these adolescent girls live within the household and mothers influence their food choices. And number three, product development using underutilized, neglected, and nutritious food items to find solutions to the micronutrient deficiency among the age group. Nutritional status of school children, adolescents, and women of reproductive age. Before any intervention programs can be floated, the starting point is to assess the status quo. 
this was done by investigating the nutrition and health status of the in-school adolescents by disaggregating data according to location, according to setting, or by gender. I found out that there were clear cut differences in the nutrition and health status between the rural and urban adolescents, those attending public and private schools, and between males and females. Onumakaya 2008, Onumakaya Itaw 2010, Onumakaya and Ologu 2012, Onumakaya 2013B, and Onumakaya 2015 investigated the high risk of undernutrition among the in school adolescents. The studies revealed that the prevalence of underweight, less than 5th percentile, was higher among rural adolescents than urban and higher among boys than girls in rural settings. At the same time, overweight and obesity, greater than 75th percentile, are higher in girls than boys in urban settings. Being overweight originally used to be, the, to be regarded as a condition of the upright. In recent times, it is now being reported among the low-income group. And the weight was higher in public schools than private schools. For the age-specific patterns of BMI, on the weight was observed in mid-adolescents, 14 to 16 years, among both boys and girls. Also among urban adolescents from age 14 years, which was the peak. Although it was noticed as early as 12 years in the rural area. On the weight in both areas tapered off until age 19 in the rural areas. Whereas none of the 19 years adolescent was on the weight in the urban. In boys, on the weight was higher in mid adolescence due to increased firm activities in rural areas. There have been triple body issues of malnutrition among in-school adolescents. As we battle on the nutrition, overnutrition is emerging, and micronutrient deficiency, otherwise known as hidden hunger, is not far-fetched. Iron deficiency anemia is a pervasive public health problem among adolescent girls in sub saharan Africa. Olumakaya 2013A assessed the dietary iron intake of adolescent females using dietary diversity as a proxy in relation to iron status. Non-iron deficient girls had a higher dietary diversity score and iron deficient girls, heme iron sources, that is animal sources, were consumed lesser than non-heme iron plant sources. Girls with low DDS were at significantly higher risk than the high and moderate DDS groups. In general, there was a low dietary iron intake among in-school adolescent girls. Onubakaye et al. 2021 conducted a study among women of reproductive age, which showed a high prevalence of iron deficiency. About 50% had hemoglobin of less than 12, and 31.1% had serum ferritin of less than 15. Also, 22% were underweight with BMI less than 18. One out of four of the women were at risk of cardiovascular disease judged by C-reactive protein. Association existed between hemoglobin and iron-rich food consumption pattern, such as cereal, dark green leafy vegetables, and organ meat. It was concluded that underweight overweight and iron deficiency existed among the in-school adolescents and women of reproductive age in southwestern Nigeria. Determinants of in-school adolescent nutrition. Having confirmed the existence of the triple button among adolescent girls in southwestern Nigeria, I further investigated the determinants. The role of snacking as a contributor to overweight among young people was investigated. Almost half of the students surveyed consumed snacks daily. One third substituted snacks for either breakfast, lunch, or ate snacks in between meals. The prevalence of overweight was high, higher among females than males. Snack consumption positively related to overweight and income had a positive association with snack consumption. 
it was concluded that snap consumption had implication on the nutritional status, especially overweight in the study area. On the contrary, my study in another setting showed that snacks consumed in addition to other meals improved in school adolescent BMI. If the food consumption patterns were not limited to three meals daily, but included snacks in between meals, undernutrition could improve. There are strong direct relationships between food consumption and malnourishment. Three quarters of the world's population live in rural areas, which could be the reason for the inability of the in-school adolescents in the study area to consume three regular meals coupled with in-between meal snacks. However, the caveat is that snacks should not replace the main meals as observed in the study by Olumakaye et al. 2010. In another study, Bakari and Olumakaye 2016 assessed students' fast food consumption patterns and body weight status. The findings revealed that more females consume fast foods than males. Females were more overweight and obese than males, which were significantly related to fast food consumption. It was concluded that snacks could positively or negatively contribute to nutrition status depending on the type of snacks consumed and whose ox is gone. In a study, Olumakaye 2015 observed that the nutritional status of children depended to a great extent on environmental conditions. The relationship between the nutritional status of children and the environmental hygiene practices of mothers was investigated. Most of the children scored above five out of the six points obtainable in the environmental hygiene condition checklist. There is no significant difference in the nutritional status of boys and girls. Underweight and overweight had significant relationships with environmental hygiene. We concluded that the environmental hygiene practice was high, which positively affected the nutritional status of children in the urban setting. Environmental hygiene determines infection rate, which affects nutrition status. Olumakaya and Ajayi 2007 investigated adolescent food choices. The study established that taste preference is the primary determinant of food and drink selection among the in-school adolescents. Despite the high nutritional knowledge, Protein foods were less preferred. Snacks high in fat and sugar were preferred to protein-rich snacks. Commercial drinks, such as fixed drinks, were preferred to homemade, non-alcoholic drinks, such as freshly squeezed fruit juices with higher nutritional content. We concluded that the adolescents' food choices were based more on taste preference than nutritional content. And the trend is the same among both urban and rural adolescents. The implication is continuous on healthy eating behavior. The use of food labels is important in the choice of processed foods. The rate at which young people consume prepackaged food products is on the increase. Consumption of PPF is a habit they cultivated from home and through peers. Olumakaye et al. 2019A evaluated the impact of nutrition education on the use of food levels on PPF and purchase decision among young people. Females were four times more likely to use food levels in purchase decisions than males. Likewise, older participants were thrice more likely to use food levels in purchase decisions than the younger ones. This could be because older participants were more health conscious than younger people. The group was later exposed to nutrition education, which positively influenced the use of PPFL on purchase decisions of PPF products among the younger people. Peer pressure inversely affected the use of PPFL for purchase decisions. The young people were advised to take responsibility for their health. Another determinant of the nutritional status of in-school adolescents is household food consumption. Imagine evidence from Olumakaye 2007 in an urban setting showed that 
household food consumption affects the health status of members of the households. It was observed that female household members of reproductive age tend to be malnourished due to inadequate nutrient intake because of inequity in intra-household food distribution compared to other age groups in the households. Women tend to give up their food for other household members in case of household food insufficiency. The women were on the margin between mild and normal malnutrition. An additional stress and strain on their body through illnesses, infections, or extra burden such as pregnancy can lead to severe malnutrition. Nigeria embarked on food fortification to accommodate the mandatory addition of vitamin A in line with the established nutritional policy. I investigated the level of awareness and utilization of the fortified food items among women. Awareness of the fortification was high, and very few could identify the fortified food items by the approved load. Invariably, the utilization was low. A positive relationship existed between utilization and household size and women's education level, while each had a negative but significant relationship with utilization. The implication is that the in-school adolescents in such households will not have adequate assets to fortify foods to mitigate micronutrient deficiency, especially vitamin A. We also investigate the possibility and suitability of billion Q as a vehicle for iron fortification. The results show that sodium pyrophosphate used as a stabilizer to ferric pyrophosphate indicated a dose response effect, which improved iron bioavailability. Teenage pregnancy is increasing today, resulting from the type of care mothers give to adolescent female children. Oluma Kaye 2009 investigated the type of care mothers considered necessary for their adolescent females. Nutritional care and non-food care were the least important. Adolescents were left to fend for themselves, thereby predisposing them to hazard. Teenage pregnancy was high, out of which some terminated the pregnancies while others had the babies. The habit of eating outside the home is common among this age group, which predisposes them to hazard. Olumakaye et al. 2010. In terms of food consumption, eating outside the home could be positive or negative. Positive in that varieties may be eaten, while negative in that hygiene may be compromised, which could lead to infection depending on the outlet where the food is purchased. Another study analyzed the participation of adolescents in food processing within households. Involvements were generally low, and protein-rich foods were the least processed. Participation of adolescents and children in household food choices, food processing, and preparation will address the issue of skipping meals and nutrition security, which, to a large extent, have a long-term effect on their nutritional status. Mothers were advised to involve the girls and boys in food processing and preparation. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, from my numerous investigations, I found out that the determinants of nutritional status among school children and in-school adolescents girls are location, individual food consumption patterns, food choices, snacking, household food consumption, use of fortified food items, environmental hygiene practices in southwestern Nigeria, which corroborated the submission of WHO. Effects of poor nutrition on cognitive function of school children and adolescents. Onumakaya and Onodu 2012 investigated the relationship between cognition and nutritional status among school children. The cognitive function was assessed using a modified Raven Scholar Progressive Matrix. About 60% of urban children were rated high against 30% in rural CF, which was statistically significant. The CF was cross-tabulated with nutritional status, and the results showed an association with undernutrition. 
the predictors, Weston and Stanton, had a synergistic relationship with CM. Stanton, a reduced growth rate in human development affects one third of children in developing countries. This may lead to vital organs, including the brain, not to fully develop. Effects of food security on nutritional status of school children and adolescents. For school children and adolescents to be adequately nourished, food security is sine qua non. Determinants of household food insecurity were investigated across wide ranging scenarios rural, peri urban, and urban areas, and comparisons were made based on the gender of household heads. Olumakaye 2011 observed that more female headed households are emerging due to high rates of divorce, single parenthood, and widowhood. Level of food insecurity was higher in female headed households than male headed households. The severity of food insecurity in rural households showed that age, income, and level of education inversely contributed to household food insecurity. However, only income was statistically significant and household size contributed significantly and positively. The higher the household size, the higher the level of food insecurity. Olumakaya and Ajayi 2006 observed that women with higher education provided more varieties of food for their households. I investigated the coping strategies adopted to mitigate food insecurity, which included skipping meals, eating less preferred food, fewer varieties, and lesser quantities. All these predisposed adolescents and women of reproductive age to malnutrition. Product development and creative works. Snacking has been identified as one of the determinants of the nutritional status of school children and adolescents. Olumakaya and Ogumba 2010 and Olumakaya and Sunny 2013 developed new cookie recipes using soy flour, bennies seed, and plain flour blends which were high in micronutrients and macronutrients. Method of cooking foods affect nutrient retention in food. I attended the International Union of Nutrition Society's 20th World Congress on Nutrition held in Granada, Spain in 2023. The developing countries were advised to go back to the underutilized and neglected food crops in their regions. All that is needed to live a healthy life is within reach. Research grants. Mr. Vice Chancellor Saul, in the quest of finding a way to fill the gap in health and nutrition of the aforementioned vulnerable groups, I won some research grants. The first was from the Unilever Research and Development in Netherlands titled Assessment of Bioavailability of Iron from the Iron Fortified Billion Cubes Among Healthy Nigerian Women in the Context of Nigerian Diet. I was the principal investigator. It was multinational research involving Nigeria, the Netherlands, Switzerland, and South Africa conducted between May 2015 and 2018. The grant was 92,787 US dollars. The second grant was from NRF Tet Fund. I am the principal investigator. It was awarded in December 2020 and is ongoing. The project is titled Development of Nutrition Mobile Application as a tool to improve dietary behavior of adolescent girls in Nigeria. The grant is 29,120,000. It's a cluster randomized control design study that will be conducted in three geopolitical zones of Nigeria, Southwest, Southeast, and North Central. At the end of the project, I will develop a mobile nutrition app named Smart Adolescent Girls Nutrition App, SAGI and will be available on Android and iOS for download with the logo integrated in the core The third grant I won was from Carnegie Corporation of New York. 
It is a collaborative effort of five fellows of the University Administration Support Program, headed by Professor Kende Taiwi. The project is titled Strengthening and Popularizing Research Management in Obafemi Awolowa University in Leife, Nigeria. I am a co-principal investigator. The project started in April 2021 and is ongoing, and the work is 15,000 US dollars. The first was AUSAID research sub agreement between OAU and Modoc University Australia titled How Can Mining and Agriculture Work Together to Provide Equitable Economic Opportunities? It was a team of nine experts headed by Professor Shola Ajayi. I was the nutrition expert on the team. <laughs> Future strategy. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. I am not resting on my oars yet, knowing that if you rest, you lost. I have adopted two strategies to continue my pursuit among the vulnerable groups. They are role modeling. Nutrition clubs will be established in secondary schools named Smart Girls, Smart Adolescent Girls Nutrition Club, Sagging Club. ICT continuous use of second app to disseminate healthy eating messages, services, and support. The expected outcome of these true strategies is dietary behavior change. I have decided to explore two avenues for the sustainability of my research programs, school-based programs and faith-based programs. As long as schools, churches, and mosques exist, the girls attend, the programs will continue to exist. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, having elucidated some of the conclusions from my numerous research works, and at the end of my sojourn in academia, I would like to say the following happened among the adolescent girls. Watch the amount and type of food they eat, use the food guide as a daily guide for eating, eat breakfast, snack smart with food groups not in mind. Choose foods lower in fats and sugars, enjoy the great flavor of fruits and vegetables, and try different varieties. Check nutrition facts on food levels to find the nutrients and calories in a single serving, and note what a single serving is. Eat at regular times and engage in physical activities. Healthy adolescents need to know that the foods they eat affect their growth. They are responsible for what they eat, they are accountable for their level of physical activity, and they can set goals and make decisions to improve their health. Adolescent girls who understand and practice all these are smart things and have the magic bullet to break malnutrition cycle. They grow to become healthy adults, bringing forth healthy children, thereby reducing the prevalence of maternal and child mortality and morbidity in Nigeria. Distinctions. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, in my search for the golden fleece, I was awarded a couple of distinctions. In 2010, Biomedical Library USA rated my article titled Food Consumption Pattern of Nigerian Adolescents and Effect on Body Weight published from my PhD thesis in the Journal of Mission Education and Behavior, Volume 42, Issue 3, USA, as first in the top 10 rating of articles published worldwide in the domain of school children and adolescent nutrition. The article was rated number one for four consecutive years, 2010 to 2013. In 2009, I was sponsored by the Netherlands government for postgraduate diploma in international food and nutrition security at a steep and fierce debate on food and nutrition security. I won and was crowned Miss Food and Nutrition Security 2009. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, as a mark of scholarship and in recognition of my contribution, I have won several awards, fellowships, and travel grants, which accorded me the opportunity to travel to five continents, Africa, Asia, Australia, Europe, and North America. I am a regular speaker at scientific conferences and world days, which 
didn't submit to the USA, UK, Netherlands, Belgium, Spain, Israel, South Africa, Morocco, Tanzania, Ethiopia, Egypt, Kenya, Uganda, Burkina Faso, and Ghana. I am a fellow of African Women in Agricultural Research and Development by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. As a part of this award, I was sponsored to the World Congress in Melbourne, Australia in 2012, out of many other benefits. I am also a fellow of University Administration Support Program, Washington, DC. In 2020, I won the prestigious fellowship on research management and leadership. Due to COVID-19 pandemic, I had virtual engagements with my host university, Wake Forest University, Western Salem, North Carolina, USA. I was featured in the 2021 May edition of the university's newsletter. Later, I went for an in-person fellowship as a visiting scholar for five weeks in 2021. While in the US, I was attached to the Office of Research and Sponsored Programs to understudy the research management and processes and building capacity in policy writing. As part of the fellowship, we are currently implementing reform in our university research administration sector in collaboration with the Central Office of Research. We are developing the capacity of early career researchers and administrative support office staff and developing a standalone policy on research integrity and responsible conduct of research. I have also won several travel grants from Netherlands government, INF, FANUS, UN, Sight and Life Foundation for Times, USAID twice, OAU United Conference. I am a consultant to the following organizations, Imperial College London, Partnership for Child Development on School Feeding Program, Unilever PLC in the Netherlands on Product Development, Food Fortification and Testing, United Nations Children's Fund UNICEF on Maternal and Child Health and Nutrition, Ocean State Government on School Feeding Program. I am a member of the Ocean State Food and Nutrition Committee. In 2017, I was appointed as a member of a 12-man delegation representing Nigeria at an ECOWAS summit on harmonization of nutrition curricula for West African countries. The summits were held in Wegadogu, Burkina Faso, and Accra, Ghana. I have supervised and co-supervised several undergraduate and postgraduate students. I am an internal examiner on postgraduate programs to the Institutes of Public Health, Departments of Community Health, Demography and Social Statistics, Physical and Health Education, and Food Science and Technology. I am an external examiner to the University of Ibadan and Ife Babalola University, Adoekiti. <laughs> to continue to be relevant in my chosen field, I am an active member of the American Society of Nutrition, US, the Nutrition Society UK, Nutrition Society of Nigeria, FANUS, ANLP, FACSIN, ANH, among others. At the completion of a research project, I donated some items to the nutrition laboratory, one of which is a bio-based minus 20 degrees centigrade deep freezer for storing biological specimens. <laughs> Professional accomplishments. I led a team to establish the Department of Catering Craft Practice at the FIDRA Technical College in Lation. I developed the curriculum, designed and equipped the food laboratory with a grant from the FIDRA Government of Nigeria. I was involved in the monitoring and evaluation of the Oshun State School Feeding Program All Meal and training of stakeholders on how to interpret and use the program implementation document in 2013. I was the keynote speaker during 2015 World Health Day organized by Institute of Public Health, theme, food safety from farm to fork, and 2015 World Egg Day cognized by African Chicken Genetic Gains, Nigeria, theme, benefits of egg consumption. I facilitated the registration of OAU in the financial system of Unilever Research and Development, the Netherlands, as a supplier of services. Leadership. To build capacity in leadership, I attended a couple of leadership programs and courses 
sponsored by NFP in South Africa, USAID in Kenya and Uganda, IRS in USA, and CON in Israel. I served as acting head of department for two years. I also served in several capacities as chairperson, departmental examination coordinating committee, documentation and record committee, logistics and entertainment committee for the faculty week. I'm a member, academic planning committee, ad hoc committee on faculty handbook, faculty review panel, faculty board of studies, among others. In service to the scientific communities, I am an editorial board member and reviewer to some national and international journals. Challenges come to make us better, not better. The journey has not been without its challenges. Struggle number one, for identity and appropriate placement as a public health nutritionist. For years, we have attempted to establish a standalone Department of Nutrition and Dietetics where public health nutrition belongs. Graduates of nutrition in OAU had suffered a slight setback because the program was domiciled in the Faculty of Agriculture. Many international opportunities were lost as a result of the wrong placement. We want to thank the National University Commission, NUC, for coming to the rescue by insisting that the department be domiciled in the College of Health Sciences Faculty of Basic Medical Sciences. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, we want to appreciate you, OAU Senate, and Government Council for the approval. Now that we have moved to the College of Health Sciences, I decided to deliver my inaugural lecture in the honor of the faculty that made me. Words are inevitable to appreciate the current and past deans and members of the Faculty of Agriculture where I have worked for two decades. Working with you is one of the best things that happened to me in OAU. I am grateful. I want to thank the Faculty of Basic Medical Sciences and College of Health Sciences. We look forward to more opportunities for further collaboration with departments in the faculty and the college. Second challenge, space allocation. Generally, it is a major challenge in OAU. Now that a new department has been created, there is the need for a standalone building designated for the department. I am using this medium to appeal to well many Nigerians, philanthropists, government peristaltors, companies and organizations to come to the rescue. Currently, the department is located far from the College of Health Sciences. There is a need to move closer for proximity. We need a building to house the departmental offices, staff, seminar rooms, classrooms, laboratory, library, and other students' facilities. Mentorship. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, the area of mentorship cannot be handled with a kid's glove. It is very germane in career development. I have been mentored and monitored by the following, Professor Grace Ogimi, my long-standing HOD, <laughs> late Dr. Ayodare, Dr. Iyabo Adeyefa, late Professor Olufunke Ajayi, Professor Tala Atimo, completed the supervision of my PhD program and facilitated my first fully sponsored international conference attendance and paper presentation to Morocco. Professor Simisola Odeyinka is my official mentor from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Professor Femi Ajayi, Professor Shola Ajayi, Professor Simon Bamire, Dr. Pamosa Wake Forest University, and Professor Femi Akisomi, my blood brother, Queensland University, Australia, mentored me in proposal writing using acceptable terminologies and languages to attract funders. He exposed me to international conferences, workshops, and opportunities in academia until maturity. In turn, to give back what I have learned over the years, I had the opportunity to mentor my students and undergraduate at undergraduate and postgraduate levels, too numerous to mention. Officially, I was involved in the formal mentoring of a staff, Dr. B.C. Bakari. 
Currently, I'm mentoring an assistant lecturer, Mrs. Bola Kokola, in proposal writing, manuscript development for publication in high impact journals, work life balance, and general life in academia. Conclusion. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, public health nutrition is an area of specialization. Having garnered experience that spans over two decades is no small feat. For someone to be an expert in a chosen field, he or she must know some of the worst mistakes that can be made in the subject and how to avoid them. Nutrition is preventive medicine. Some health challenges are addressed by modifying the diet of individuals. The trajectory in the 21st century research world is collaborative. It could be suicidal if someone who did not study nutrition begins to recommend nutrition regimens. There is what is called personalized nutrition. Nutrition is not a case of what is good for the goose is also good for the gander. For the world to be a safer sphere to live in, we must work collaboratively, leaving the expertise to the expert in each field. Knowledge acquired over the years cannot be compared with knowledge received in one year of a short course. Bearing in mind that one can only sell a thing one has proficiency in. If you desire to succeed, you cannot rule out professional help of those who have years of experience in all those fields that fall out of your expertise. Adolescent nutrition is a window of opportunity that has been identified to flatten the rising cost in maternal and child morbidity and mortality. The future generation will talk about that now. Adolescents have a digital life, finding mobile phones. That makes them smart teens. Adolescent girls are razor sharp and have to be circumspect in dietary decisions to live a healthy adult life. Without any fear of contradiction, I have decided to leverage their digital life to improve their dietary behavior, which can be acquired through appropriate intervention programs specifically targeted towards them. Good dietary behavior is a magic bullet for smart teens to live a healthy lifestyle and break the malnutrition cycle. <laughs> Recommendations. Based on the experience garnered over the years from the different academic and research clients, I have the following recommendations. There is a need for improvement in nutrition education, promotion and communication to increase adolescent nutrition knowledge, Improvements in nutrition education, promotion, and communication to increase mothers' nutrition knowledge. Improvements in women's education status. Women empowerment. Use of level seven technologies. Dietary diversity. Involvement of adolescents in food processing. And youth empowerment. Empowering youth in skill acquisition could prepare them for future challenges in meeting the household needs. Feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and not giving it. On that note, our almighty, all-knowing, and all-sufficient God deserves our praise. He is the Alpha and the Omega. We ascribe all glory for great things he has done. I must not forget the roles my late parents, Mr. Oluyemi and Mrs. Florence Akisomi, played in giving me a good head start in life before their demise. As the only girl among four boys, I sincerely appreciate them both. I wish they are alive to see the good things happening to their baby girl, Sisi Turayo. May their souls continue to rest in peace. What are not enough to acknowledge my brother's role in my life, my elder, bro my elder brothers, engineer Olumide Akisomi, a first class graduate of electrical and electronic engineering OAU, and Professor Penny Akisomi, a first class graduate of plant science, OAU, who are following us online. I was the only one that did not make a first class in my family. <laughs> I love you dearly and thank you so much. To my younger brothers, Olufisayo and Olufunle here present, I appreciate the encouragement you gave me, your sister Olufunke. To my parents in the Lord, the most reverend doctor, Ephraim Adebola and Mrs. Olurasi Adebowa, your mentorship in church leadership and prayers are appreciated. Thank you, Daddy and Mommy. <laughs> to my in-laws, the Right Reverend Professor Dabwa Bak and Barrister Mrs. Harriet Ashaju, the former Vice Chancellor of Ajayi Crowder University, or your 
my mother-in-law, and the entire Ulumakaye dynasty, thank you for your prayer and support. To all my colleagues in the Faculty of Agriculture, and particularly the Department of FNC and Human Nutrition and Dietetics, you are well appreciated for your support. Thank you to my professional colleagues from the University of Ibado, other institutions, government peristalters, NGOs, industries, and private sectors for being so wonderful. This section will be incomplete without appreciating my God's saints and my husband, the most reverend Dr. Humphrey Bamishemi Olumakaye, PhD Ibado, the Narcissa Bishop of Lagos, Anglican Diocese, and the Archbishop of the Ecclesiastical Province of Lagos. What I am today is by the grace of God and by your support, encouragement, and reassurance. You brought out hidden virtues that I never knew I had. When I feel inadequate, you always tell me, Zeus, you can do it. You are my cheerleader who supported me to attain this enviable position. You always said to me that my success is your success. It is your habit to always unlock potentials in people. Thank you so much, my sweetheart. My confidence, my advisor, my prayer partner, and all repentant supporter. I want to thank our son, Richard, who is joining us online for your cooperation and understanding when I was away from home searching for opportunities. Richie, mommy loves you dearly. You will make it with ease in life. Yes. To all my spiritual children, too numerous to mention, you are blessed. Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, my Lord Bishops and their wives, good people of Ijecha land, Oshinote's diocese and Lagos diocese, friends and families, I lack the right word to appreciate you. Thank you so very much. To all my students, you are the best. Thanks for allowing me to rub on you. You will all make it in life. Now, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, be all glory, honor, dominion, and adoration forever and ever.